Hi guys, I'm Gene Simmons, and you're not. I just finished talking uh, to Kara, but actually, Kara being a shrink just finished talking to me. What have I learned? Be delusional. Highly recommend you guys do that. Be delusional about yourselves. And uh, if this is being seen by you or her being heard by you, watch it. I'm fascinating. I'm very picky with who I choose for my show, and I do have quite a good collection. By the way, how much content have you gotten so far? Uh, How much content? I asked first. A lot. Um, I've been doing it since 2017. That's not what I meant, but with me. How much content do I have for you? I already you? asked that. What do, you, what do you mean? The last couple minutes? Well, so saying? much time has gone by. We could have been like on it. But this is what we do. I'm well, this just, is what we do. This is the talk. This is not a formal q and I mean, I have some talking points, but we're going to chat and I'm going to get to know you. Getting to know all about you. You've done eight million interviews already, probably. One or two. What, what's the question? You're like, please don't ask me that question How again. How long is it? Oh, they all, they're always taught, want to talk about the tongue. Uh-huh. I would stick it out, but the floor is dirty. What do you feel like nobody ever, ever asks you that they should ask you about? Am I gay? Why? Nobody has ever asked me if I was gay. Well, is it because of the 5,000 women? No, I, I, maybe I don't come off that way. I don't know. I just work here. Uh huh. But you have the stories behind it. And everybody, I'm sure, asks you about Cher, and they ask you about Diana Ross, and they want to know about your relationship with Shannon. Yeah. But I feel like I also want to know about your mom, though, because I have heard you talk a little bit about your mom, and I kind of feel like you have a soft spot for her for good reason. Any, any boy of any age will tell you they're mama's boys, because fathers tragically leave their families. The statistics are staggering and shameful. Mothers stay there until death. Right, so your father stuck around for how long and then he left? My father was a hound and he had, as far as I knew, either four or five other wives and other children all over the world. There's there's even talk of a half-sister somewhere in Paris that I don't know anything about and he was very active and I finally met my half brother and three half sisters by two or three different other mothers and actually I was afraid of getting married I married I was afraid of getting married all my life because I didn't want to turn into my father you know start kids and everything and so for a long time the first 29 years with Shannon Anything you can imagine. I had an appetite, and I just always wanted what I wanted. Men, Mm -hmm. you know, they compartmentalize. See what I'm doing? I'm them. No, me. Got to take... I compartmentalized and thought, well, that was over there. doesn't affect this. But it does. Everything affects everything. And arrogant, and where are you going? (laughs) Where am I going? Who wants to know? You know, that sort of thing. On the other hand, take a look at it from the male point of view. You grow up under the roof, if you're lucky, and there's food to eat and everything, and your mother or father are there, but usually the mother. Where are you going? What, you know, what, and you can't wait to get out from under that roof. And mm-hmm. As soon as you get out and you're dateable of that age, you meet a girl, then she asks the same questions. Where are you going? Why are you looking at her? All that stuff. You know, so as soon as you leave the household, females do not want you to wander because we wander. So did you know that at the time yes. that I, this I, was what was going on? It was about your father. Did you were you aware of it then? No, no? I, I did. I was not clear enough to be able to verbalize it or sort of connect the feelings and the emotions. But I know what it felt like not to have a father, you know, growing up. There was no father figure. My Uncle George was as close as I got to a reliable sort of father figure. So, and I was an only child with my mother, so Uh you had to sort of figure it out by yourself. And I knew my shortcomings, but I didn't think of them as shortcomings because 
in the male culture, there's coxmanship, which is, oh, that guy's got a million chicks and blah, 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 mm -hmm. and that's cool. If women get that, you're a slut, mm -hmm. especially by other women. The harshest critic of women are women. Yeah, so generally speaking, almost exclusively, women are from Mars, men have penis. See what I did there? By the way, the guy that wrote that book. Yeah, what was his name? Bob Gray or something like that? Well, the original title was uh, Men Are From Mars, uh, Women Are From Venus, or the other way around. Women Are From Venus. No, I, think, that, from, I think you got it right. Yeah, yeah, Men Are From Mars. Well, he got divorced and lost all his money. That's true. He needed a prenup, I guess. Uh, he's not Jewish. We're, we're the people who, you know, lawyers, bankers, accountants, well, we, clearly we, you're smart. Uh, never, very. Never claimed to be, but I'm still That's here. That's fine, but I mean, you can see. By the all way, you're 12 now, right? How old? Are you? I just continue. turned 75. Congratulations. Yeah. You know, I never thought about anything except I've always had a fear of being poor. Well, you were poor as a kid, right? Yeah, we had nothing. I mean, my once my father wasn't there, and we were always poor in Israel, which is where I'm from. Uh, my mother and my father are Hungarian, and my mother survived the Nazi concentration camps when she was 14, but there was never any money. I remember when we came to America through her brothers, Larry and George, who were successful. So they came to America before she did? Before the war. Okay. And what, they had businesses or something here? Yes, my, my Uncle George, her brother, was a very successful, uh, let me get the words right, he made false teeth and false balls. So yes, the guys that got injured or whatever, somebody had to make prosthetic balls. And I, one of the first jobs I ever had was delivering this stuff in a brown paper bag mm -hmm. and taking the subway to dentists and other doctors and a prosthodont prosthodontist. So he made a very good living. And my other uncle, Larry Klein, uh, was a baker, owned his own bakery and everything. He'd get up at three o'clock in the morning and he showed me how to do it. He'd have these pastry shells around and he'd have gel, you know, jelly or stuff like that. And he showed me how good he was with with a knife and just kind of flick the stuff and it would get in there, real marksmanship. And he would bring over when, uh, what were they called, glad bags, those plastic garbage, you, you put, you don't just throw your garbage in the thing, there's a plastic covering. Oh, a flap, is that what you're saying? No, 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 you throw, whenever you throw something in your garbage yeah. pail. Yeah, yeah, the glad bags. plastic, glad yeah. bags. Glad bags. Yeah, glad bags. So when they first came out, my uncle Larry would bring over glad bags filled with j cheese danishes and jam and all that stuff. Mm. And I, like a, I, I would stuff myself like a Christmas goose, just wouldn't even b chew it, just mwah. To this day, I just had it. I don't want to talk about it because <laughs> I feel guilty. Yeah. Okay, but and yeah, I, And I swallowed too, and then you die. That's all there is. Okay, so let's get back to this. So you had two entrepreneurial uncles who came here before you and your I mom. I don't think they ever thought of it that way, and neither did I. You uh -huh. came to America to survive, right. to, to be able to feed your families, because where they came from, there weren't jobs, and Europe was in turmoil. Europe, uh, right before World War II, was still trying to survive from World War I, which devastated all of Europe. So the economies were dead, people were starving. The uh, Deutschmark after World War One. Yes, I used to teach sixth grade. I know. Uh, the Deutschmark after World War One was worthless. You'd see Germans with wheelbarrows filled with Deutschmarks. I mean, pounds of Deutschmark, trying to get eggs and bread. Uh huh. Yeah. So it was very difficult living. Meantime, America was, you know, the land of plenty. Prosperity. So your your mother came over, and so did you talk about things? Were you like a talking type of mother, no, son? No, I'm the male of the species. So ask me how I am. Gene, how are you? Go ahead. Gene, how are you? Fine. 
And if I ask you, how are you? Well, when I was a child of four, I mean, and then we don't come up for air for two weeks. That's why you guys slap the newspaper out of our hands in the morning. Why are you reading the newspaper? Because I don't want to talk, bitch. I just want to read the paper. Okay. You know that. By the way, scientific fact, you guys use five times as many words per day as the male of the species. About 5,000 to 25,000. Well, that's a fact I have never... That's a fact I've never heard Google before. That's interesting. And Schmoogel. I love that you have Kiss on the back of your phone, too. That's fun. Okay, let's see what it says. Oh, go away. Hmm. Okay, here we go. How many more words per day do women use than men? It's a fair. Okay. Read it and weep. Out Men loud. speak about 5,000 words a day. Women speak about 15,000. And that is from TikTok.com. Okay, let's go to... Uh, <laughs> I like to check my sources. Research shows that most women speak, on the average, 20,000 words per day, approximately 13,000 more than the average male. That's from... Gladue Consulting. BBC. Okay, BBC. Prattle of the sexes. Do women... Here we go. Do, uh, when it comes to conversation, are women really more likely to be bigger talkers than men? Women use an average of 20,000 words a day compared to the mere 7,000 that men utter. Uh -huh, uh -huh. What does it mean? Do I have my mother's hips? Why won't he call? Because he doesn't want to talk to you. Why won't he call? All right, so your mother, though, but you total respect and love for how she brought I, you up, right? I, I was always aware that my mother was wise. Speaking of, uh, <laughs> speaking of potato chips, I'm doing a podcast, so you're on live. <laughs> what area of town are you in? I'm, I'm here in Hollywood. <laughs> Can I ask why you're calling? <laughs> No, you can call. Welcome you, to the tell show. Me. Everybody's. I just, to, I just wanted to know if you wanted to get laid tonight. Y yes, I would like that very much. Okay, so if you do, when you're on your way home, can you pick up my dress from the Glen? <laughs> can you text it to me? Because I've got to be the Beverly Hills Hotel. I, can't, I don't know what's wrong with my phone. The texts are not going through to anybody, and I don't know what's wrong with it. So okay, I'll, I I'll, I'll, uh, I'll make a note for myself. Okay, it was good talking to make you. A, make a note of it. I, I will, yeah. Okay. And that's that. So, all so right. So she put up, by the way, she put up, I was gallivanting. It's uh -huh. a nice way for the first 29 years of our time together. Right. She gave me two kids and everybody she knew, every next door name, just, and if it moved... I want, I desired it. And if it didn't move, we'd work something out. See, what it, that was another joke. So and what, and what it's happened not, then? It's not unique. What happened for you personally? What was the wake-up call? Was it when she it said takes a, It takes either. a long time. It takes a long time for the, I talk in this way, and then I listen back to it, and I go, you asshole, just say what you feel. It takes a long time for men, the male of the species, to grow up. You look at a guy who's 6'2", I'm almost 250 pounds now. You know, oh, you're, you're, you're. No, it's not, a, it's not a man. It's a 14-year-old horny boy who will mount anything and not care and mean nothing. Don't want to cuddle, nothing. There's just, and it comes, and I know exactly where it comes from, and I've shared this with social scientists and anthropologists and all that. They said, no, it's in the DNA. When we were Australopithecines, Australopithecus africanus, then changed to Australopithecus afarensis, when we, by the way, started to be more biped, because we came from the plains of Africa, mostly at the beginning was in the Olduvai Gorge in Tanganyika, as discovered by L.S. Leakey, Lucy, the 3,600,000 year old biped, was three and a half feet tall, she was a female. 
and we couldn't stay in the caves. You had to stay in the cave because you'd have monthly cycles and you get out in the field and every predator would be able to smell your blood. You'd be killed immediately, not to mention the fact that you weren't as strong as the males and you couldn't run as fast. So you're fucked, maybe not the way you want to be. So women hid in caves and w hoped that there'd be a male that they could somehow, th I'll give you children, I'll give you some of this for some of that. And of course, nothing's changed. The guy that shows up with the biggest slab of meat on his shoulder gets the alpha female. That's, nothing's changed. It's still the same. Show me the ugliest guy who's hung like a second grader, who's two feet tall and has a few billion dollars, and I'll show you the most ravishing, beautiful women around him. It's All right, just so life. So, so, but uh, but you specifically. So I get I, it. You're, you're giving me the I background. I never wanted to get married uh -huh. because I thought once I got married, I would I would stray. I'd become my father. So you didn't feel like you were straying because you weren't married, even though you were in a committed well, we relationship. A we had a prenup, and I was very clear. I don't want children. I don't want to get married. If this is not, if this is not to your liking, I'll. S you know, I'll support your decision, no no problem. I'll introduce you to other guys that may want to get married. And I said, but warning, men are men. All right, let's get back to you, you. Yeah. So then you were ah, afraid. It's easier to talk about I know. somebody else than So me. you should know that I'm also a therapist. Oh, okay. So I really like to know what your experiences are. And like, I'm interested in what your ups My and downs are. Yeah, your ups and downs in life, your how you feel, what you think say, about, uh, it, how I'm, you grew. I'm probably delusional, uh -huh. but it helps me uh, not cope. It's an easier life. And I've never, you know, I've heard about people with depression and feeling sad and I've never been unhappy. I've never been unhappy. When my mother died, I was devastated. Mm. Uh, that's pretty much it. Uh huh. Of course you were devastated when In your mom... In a different way than you might imagine. Oh, how? I made it... Of course it was that my mother gave me everything, including life itself. Uh... You know, there were no scripts or anything. It was just kind of talking points. And I remember there were mosquitoes and everything. And I don't know what happened, but I dropped to my knees, just like in the movies, and started stammering and uh, all that stuff. We have to get married. I have to stop this, you know, that kind of stuff. So just like that, it yeah, just Because if you. I thought about it long enough, I would convince myself with logic... Why do you want somebody telling you what to do, where to go, and where to be? Like, just live free. Be an ethical person. Tell the truth. Don't hurt anybody. But be free to mm -hmm. decide for yourself what you want to do. Because marriage is an institution. And the joke is you have to be nuts to be in a fucking institution. That's the joke. <laughs> right. But in essence, you have to get over yourself to give somebody else dominion over you. And that's a tough one for men. We won't let other men, you know, we have the pecking order kind of thing. If a guy comes up, we challenge it. We stand up for it. That's our survival me me uh, method in DNA. Otherwise, if he, if he dominates you, you lose not just face, but, you know, power. And ultimately for us, it's about power. We can't give birth. All we have is our reputation or power and all that. Mm. I'm really fascinating, aren't I? You are fascinating. I am. I'm As all people I'm are. I'm convinced. As Pardon? all people are, really. No, if no, you no. get in there. Oh, no, but you no. have to get in there. No, you don't have to get in but there. But I feel... I'm immediately well, you... No, I feel like you have a bit of a... You know, you have things that you like to say that all you're comfortable it. talking about. I'll talk about anything. So, yeah, so it's pretty easy. Um... Was your mom ever disappointed in you? Not as far as I know. Not once? You don't remember like one thing where... Uh, she was concerned, you know, because my mother was 14 and was hurt. She saw our whole family 
destroyed in Nazi Germany. And the gas chambers, she saw her mother go with her grandmother, all of it. And she didn't want me to get hurt. And I made sure both my roommates in college were black because I wanted to confront any inner or outward racism I might have. I remember one of the guys was Rob Ednis, who convinced me, it's so funny, who convinced me that on weekends he was a gigolo. He would rent out himself for $15. I go, $15, wow! And he was a funny guy, and the roommate was great too. He, was, he convinced the uh, college that he had a twin brother, Rob and Bob Ednis, so one <laughs> totally made it up. Totally made up. He, on one, he's wearing glasses, and the other one, he's do another photo. And there he is next to himself. And my mother was concerned, and she said, I don't want you to be, you know, look like mm. this. She grew up, anybody who was different, who was not Jewish and Hungarian, oh, and they okay. were fascists. The Hungarians were fascists anyway. Uh, she was concerned. Different people, you know, if they're not Jewish, they're going to try to hurt you and all that. And then I started going out after share with uh, Diana Ross. And I wanted to get my mother ready. Uh, you know, I said, Mom, I'm seeing this, you know, R&B singer. She's very popular, black, very, and she's very nice and everything. And I just wanted to ask you, is it okay to bring her over for Passover dinner? And uh, uh, she goes, who is the who is the thick Hungarian accent? How is the orchestra? Uh, the band's fine, Mom. The orchestra. Yeah. Uh -huh. said, no difference in, <laughs> it's no such thing as band. It's an orchestra. But she would know a band because of you, I would think. Yeah, but her in her mind, it's an orchestra. And okay. she never understood who paid me. What are the hours of work? And who, who gives you uh -huh. all this money? Okay. Just didn't understand. It didn't compute no. for her. And I gave her, you know big money with didn't understand the dot you know the zeros what it all meant and i had to go to the bank and you know uh-huh can you pick up my dress from if you pass by the glass? yeah so now you have it in a text it worked that's my orders um and no, so wait, you so asked if you could bring her to passover dinner yeah, so... Uh, and she said, who is Diana said, Ross? No, I didn't mention the name. I said, you know, she's an army girl. Oh, I love Diana Summer. Didn't have a clue who it was or anything. Uh-huh. Uh, I have not met many pure souls. I know it's easier to talk about your mother that way because it's your mother... Uh, I've met the Dalai Lama, and there was a sense, okay, this is somebody who's got, you know, moral fiber, ethics, and so on. I haven't met many people who have that. My mother had a kind of a philosophy that I adhere to today, which is, I don't care about stuff, really. Mm. This literally was in my closet. My daughter bought me these. Shannon brought me those. Love these boots. She, she, what are these boots? These are heterosexual cowboy boots. They're, they're cool. They're like they're, uh, snake skin. And this was given to me by Your watch. Eric, who's our drummer in Kiss. And I don't, I don't go shopping. I uh -huh. get nervous going into Starbucks. Let me have a cup of coffee. Would you like a half calf decaf and a half a sober sack and a rebound sack? If you don't give me a cup like 7-Eleven, I'm going to take myself out. I just want the coffee and get out. Yeah. I can't go shopping. You just need a pike. That's what you order at Starbucks. Pike. It's a pike place. It's just coffee. I don't want to say those words. All right. Well, you need a grande it's, pike is what I'm telling you for the future. It's stupidity has taken over life. <laughs> we have to get back to the English language. It pre-existed. It's not a venti. That's not what it means. A well, venti, of course, means. I'm sure you know what it means. Go ahead. Tell them. 20 ounces. Yeah. In it's Italian, not. It's 20. It's not, is it? It's not 20 ounces? No. What is it? I have no idea. I don't idea. even know. And why do you want to refer to coffee by uh, ounces? And, and Americans don't know what ounce is. You and also, give me this. also, why ounces? Like, we should have the metric system here, I'm just saying. Americans refuse. But it's tens. By the way, I it's studied easy. all that stuff. Why yeah. America refuses to go on the metric system, which is logical. And it comes down to minerals oil and self-sufficiency 
the middle of America has, is the breadbasket of the world. We could feed the planet. We don't need anybody else. We do have the ability to frack. You know what that is? Uh-huh. Yeah. Fracking, oil. It's all here. We need nobody. The land mass is larger than Europe. What are you going to have the rest of the world tell you what to do, including wearing little cutesy shorts and playing soccer? It's the biggest thing in the world. We refuse. We have football, which is not a ball at all. Yeah, Americans are completely self-sufficient and don't need the world. So that's what you're saying is the reason why we don't have the metric system yes, here? It was a way to stay independent? No, uh, you don't even think about anybody else. There are 45 million people oh, that so go to like Las Vegas. Oh, so it's like myopic. You're just seeing yourself or our own. Is that what you're saying? We're not even looking if at the were, external if world. If you were in any other country, the American culture would dominate you. The music you hear, the stars of the world, Taylor Swift, who's great, all that stuff. It dominates the world. The burgers you eat, the pizza you eat, the all that stuff. I haven't had frog legs recently, have you? Um, no. Yeah. Cordon Bleu, most, most people have no idea what you're talking about and could care less. It means nothing. A rabbit's head with worms sticking out of it. Fuck out of here. My son actually uh, messaged me. You're 12. Uh, thank you. Yeah. He's messaged me. He's in Korea, South Korea right now, and he showed me and Octopus my husband. Soup. Live, live octopus. It's octopus soup. I'm well aware and of it. And I could see it moving. And people eat it. And he but, ate yeah. it. Yeah, it's yeah, a lot. That's going to be popular. <laughs> that's not going to work in the of U.S. Of course, nowhere. Okay, but wait, let's go. By the so- way, the South Koreans and my daughter Sophie's huge. So is Nick in the music world. She's got, uh, she works with the K-pop groups and everything. She writes and manages and everything. What's your friend doing on the ground? Oh, she's checking the, the voice recorder because the batteries were a little okay. like uh, iffy before how okay, we Okay, I thought in. she was like praying. Some <laughs> Middle Eastern <laughs> countries do um, that. We're looking good. It fell over and I couldn't Oh, fell. okay, fabulous. Okay. Okay, good, I'm thank you. Because you're saying awesome stuff and I want to make sure we capture it. Right, right. I don't want to come and go back to the computer and be like, okay, this is not, this got cut off. So, so she's here for that. Um, Well, she's so here for my daughter. That. Goes to South Korea. She's been to South Korea uh-huh. to write with the K-pop bands. In fact, the song. What does she do with the K-pop bands? She writes and uh, produces them. Oh, and does fabulous! Everything. Oh, she's huge. Bubblegum, which is a massive song on the planet, that's her song. So when she goes over there, every corner, McDonald's, Kentucky Fried Chicken, Pizza Hut, anywhere you go, nowhere is there a, you know, live octopus soup. Uh huh. Right. Right. That's all. It's like grits. No. Nobody eats that. When you go to the South, what you get is Starbucks and McDonald's. And that's... Sure, now. Dominates the planet. For one reason. That's what people want. Okay, so I have to, I have to talk about the fact that you were like the original licensing market. Like, you know business. Your business sense is insane. All the knowledge of mankind is right here. So if you don't know something, Ask. Of course, it's Siri. Ask Siri. And so the rest of it is up to you. So all the, you don't ever, you can't say, oh, I didn't know that. Ask. So the way, you know, there are books before that. There were books. And I used to spend every day after yeshiva, because I studied to be a rabbi. Yeah. Then I discovered there are no chicks there. So I gave that up right away. The prime directive, the urge to merge. See what I did there? I used to go to the library. I'm the only one I ever met who's read the Encyclopedia Britannica. Uh, guess what? My son who ate the octopus. Very impressive. That's what he did. He would. I would get these encyclopedia volumes for him. Yeah. And by the way, kids weren't reading encyclopedias at that time in the 2000s. But he would sit 2000s. on his bed. <laughs> you know what I mean? For me, that's 100 years ago. But... No, but still, even then, in the early Very 2000s, impressive. who's sitting there with a Knowledge big... Knowledge is the secret power of anybody. And it, despite anything else, the jewelry you wear and all that stuff, it's free to anybody who cares to take the time. Right, so you just absorbed a lot of information. I'm you were bore, very curious. I'm, I'm boring at events when I started to talk to you about Australopithecus africanus yeah. and stuff. 
the rest of the people just don't care. Right, but it's very interesting to you. It's fascinating. You could dive deep on a lot Everything of topics. Everything is fascinating, including the difference between we we are complete. We have nothing in common. Nothing. Our brains are wired differently. We have chemicals inside of us you don't have. We're completely different. You know why men die younger than their wives? Because yeah. because they want to. Yeah. Do a guy joke. It's interesting. Do it a all, guy joke. Go I, ahead. I don't have a guy there joke. There are none. I don't have a. I don't you have know a why there are no joke guy either. jokes? We don't care. <laughs> You're so. You guys are so sensitive about everything. So this is a this big. This is a beautiful style. Your jeans are hundred years old. That's nice. Anyway, we don't. Nothing. It's so interesting. Us. So yeah. it's interesting to me what comes to the top for you a lot is the gender, top. men versus women. It's a bit, is it a big theme or just today what you're in the mood to well, talk about? Well, the biggest mystery in life are you guys. Let's see what business just came in. Was it business? Paul Stanley. Oh, so Paul Stanley and you just sold the whole encyclopedia or what do you call it the whole the brand the brand you sold the whole brand you sold all of kiss almost all yeah so what it, so is there going to be a new kiss then there's going to be like young there are the, you know like the the perennial um that's a big word like gymnasium kids look that up the caterpillar when it goes into the cocoon it looks like the end but it's really the beginning what comes out is more beautiful and is not relegated or trapped by gravity it can soar and that's what's happening with yeah, kiss. I love that analogy yes okay that's I what's love happening almost everything that comes out of my mouth and sometimes out of my ass so okay so bringing that back I forget what came first Paul Stanley's text or was it a phone call or the focus on the difference between men and women my question I didn't understand. Oh, it. we were talking about with the with the metaphor with the uh, butterfly. Well, now it's meta five because inflation. See, see what I did there? <laughs> You're taking my stuff. <laughs> I'm getting it. I'm getting it. So, what was the question? Uh, so, the question was okay. So there, so there's going to be more to kiss. Yes, we have a uh, some new partners called Pop House. They're responsible for the ABBA show, which is one of a kind show. But even that technology is now yesterday's. Uh, people are not going to be able to believe anything. There are very simple uh, sort of drawings and things of, on YouTube. You can go kiss avatars, and you'll see tip of the iceberg. Okay, so you feel good about this passing on of oh, the brand? The bigger the movie is uh, being cast now. There's a good script going to triple A talent. I can't name you the director because I'm not allowed. Are you allowed to? Na oh, so the director will come on first and then the actors uh, will come there on? Are th different things being planned at the same time. There's uh -huh. cartoon show and live shows, you know, like a kiss show. So you're not going to be involved in any of that then? All of it. You stay involved. We control all of it. Oh, okay. So you gave them like the rights to it. That's what I said. Got it. I understand. Okay, that's exciting. So, and when it makes money, we get a slice of uh, every dollar. Okay. In addition to the big chunk they gave us. Ah, uh, okay, that's excellent. So you always had that like business acumen, though. When you started, you decided you were going to make that band not like no or orchestra, well, like no other unfortunately, orchestra. Unfortunately, most guys that strum guitars never paid attention to truth in advertising it was never called music it was always called music business yeah but music is more fun to talk business you know it's guys with jewish names predominantly yes yeah but i don't want to pay attention to that well too bad uh -huh. and so from the outset we took care of that uh created trademarks there was a kiss before kiss Oh, yeah? They never trademarked the name. Oh, so you got you it. You snooze, you lose. Uh-huh. And you But did I didn't know that. Well, it was your responsibility. You have an inferred fiduciary duty to yourself to find out who, what, when, where, how, having the right thing at the right place and the right time. That's your responsibility. But like, how did you know you would be able to sell 
merchandise and people would want that and it would the become a big thing. example is uh, what your eyes and your experiences. So at the very outset that we were starting to play shows, fans, early, early on, because in those days the way you spread your brand was magazines, circus magazine and so on, that had a lot of photos of new bands, Mott the Hoople and David Bowie and you know, all that. It was a visual thing. In fact, a lot of young fans, 15 year olds, bought their first albums because of the art. Mm. They'd hear a song and they liked the way it looked and they'd read stuff about it. That art is gone. And uh, we saw fans, early fans or curiosity fans, who started to make their own Kiss t-shirts. They're telling you what they want or what they're willing to pay. So the audience is always right. And since then, you know, it's been Oh my God, over 50 years, and <laughs> boy do I look good. It's been over 50 years, mm -hmm. and during that time, I gotta do the joke, but it's also true. We've had literally thousands of licensed products, everything from Kiss condoms to Kiss caskets. We'll get you coming, and we'll get you going. See what I did there? Yeah, yeah. So that's perfect. And again, I so keep you, you, perfect. So, right, so you were obviously tuned in, so you are we, an observer. We were, the word you, you, you know, the oh, ego, okay. So the you ego and Paul is uh, insatiable, uh -huh. and we like to hear stuff about ourselves. It's the way you like to hear. Oh, you're beautiful. No matter how many times you hear it, but it's not, un not fair, unfair, because uh, I get a lot of the credit for. Oh, you're such a genius and all that. It it always takes a team. Paul knew stuff I didn't know. I knew stuff he didn't know. He should have taken my advice and signed Van Halen. I found that band. I know, I read about that. Yeah, so you found them? They were just I, performing somewhere, low key? Small club, yeah. Convinced them not to sign with a yogurt manufacturer who was gonna take their money, yeah. Literally? He literally. And I told him, forget about money, I'll pay for it, I'll fly you to New York, I'll put you at Electric Lady Studios, I'll produce your first 15 song demo, and this is while you were, where? what were you doing at that time? I was, I was in a band. Oh my God, this was going on at the same time that you were? 77. Uh, okay. 1877. Okay, so what happened See, to they? Joke. Was, <laughs> so they didn't, they didn't. Oh, that, no, they did everything I, I said and everything. And I couldn't convince Paul or the rest of the guys in the band or the management. They just said, what are you talking about? Said, in a year or two, this is gonna be the biggest band. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, also Diana, not Diana, uh, Eliza, Eliza Minnelli. Man. So you managed well, her career? To, yeah, we knew each other socially. You know, in those days in New York, in the Cher and Diana days, you'd go to events and mix with people. You uh -huh. either never bothered to care enough to want to go to parties, you know, with these people. But stars tended to kind of gather together. So I remember going to dinners with Nureyev, with famous uh, ballet dancer, and Pacino and everybody. And there was a very famous uh, designer for women called Halston. And there were specials and movies about him. I forgot who the, uh, was it Michael Douglas? No, that was Liberace. Somebody played Halston in the yeah, movie. Yeah, there was also, I think, a Netflix yeah, a Netflix series I saw. I forget yeah. who I forget who it was too oh, though. Ewan McGregor. Oh yeah, that's who it was. Yes. Ewan McGregor. God bless you. And by the way, it that was Halston's uh, -huh. uh place because I was there. Oh, okay. And that's when I first met Liza and Nuriev was there. Like oh, everybody I loved everybody the, was there. What, the I was designs. sitting with Cher and yeah. I remember Liza and people would mysteriously go up to Halston's bedroom, there was a staircase, and then come down a little bit later. I had never been high, so I didn't know what that thing, oh, everybody's got a cold. I didn't know what that was. I was one of the idiots, you know, the joke, you want some Coke, how about some 7-Up? I, I actually uh -huh. said that. So you were that unaware of it? Never cared about it. So it just didn't? enough to be able to approach the opposite sex. 
because they had issues with themselves. I told you I was delusional. I am delusional. I'll walk up to the prettiest girl or whatever, or the most successful businessman and offer to blow him. No, that's not what I meant to say. I, I didn't care. I may not be the best looking guy in the world, but I will walk out with your mom and your girlfriend. Just like uh, your life experiences. When I was growing up, later on I figured it out, without a father and anything, you're on your own. The best way to learn to swim is somebody pushes you into the deep end of the pool and it's sink or swim. Mm-hmm. And it was never an issue that you wouldn't, you know, that you wouldn't get involved with drugs at all. Like nobody had any issue with that, did oh, they? I was surrounded by it. But did and they care that you weren't yes, partaking? Yes, there's a lot of uh, social pressure. Ah, oh, come on, just one. Come on, how do you know it's not good? You know, all that stuff. But also observation is your best teacher. I, I was never around a drunk person who ever said anything witty. Mm. And if you finally land a girl, because that's what he wants, which is why you guys do all these bright colors, the menstrual colors here and all that stuff. It's what it's all about. So what 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 do you think motivated you to do all of these money-making I ventures? I wanted my mother to be proud because we were poor. And the first... Uh, decent amount of money I got I told my mother you can go out and buy any house you want anywhere where did she get a house well unfortunately she's no longer around she lived to be 94 years of age if you can believe that uh, in a place called Bayside Queens yeah and then after that bought a bigger place in a place called New Hyde Park okay and did she live there her the rest of her life yes oh okay where are your places? And have you made a ton of money on real estate too? Yes. Yes. What's the trick? The trick? Well, again, right thing, almost in anything, having the right thing at the right place mm-hmm. at the Timing. right time. Because mm-hmm. everything is cyclical, including the food you eat, the summer mm-hmm. food, you know. And knowing when to buy and when to sell. That includes the stock market. Buy do low, you, do you play high. the stock market? Oh, yeah. I've, I'm in crypto deep and the market futures commodities and but it's fun for you right especially because you well, the have best fun enough is making money yeah it's not fun if you're losing your ass uh-huh. but you also have to lose from time to time too all these things can't win automatically so how do you go with roll with that predominantly they all win uh-huh. the biggest piece of advice because most people aren't qualified and they won't access the information they won't put in the time So if you don't have the time, invest all your stupid money, and there's a lot of it. You go on vacations, you don't need to go. That means you gotta pay for the wife and the kids and the mistress on the side. You gotta pay for all that, because he will have side flesh. And the side flesh is also happy to do that, because she's having fun too, because girls like it as much as guys. And car payments and things and all that like all those things you will go on vacations you don't need to go to that's a lot of money don't go stay at home buy her a diamond ring she'll be happier and it'll be cheaper uh you don't need to go to the bar and treat all your 30 friends there to drinks and everything don't do that so if you take a look at the numbers it's shocking so you have 365 or so days a year, and every weekend you do nothing. There's two days a week, 52 weeks. That's 104 days where you're doing fuck all, nothing. So don't take 104 days and spend money. Don't do that. Watch the ball game, order chips, stay at home, keep the wife company. Uh, don't go to play golf. You, the, the cute girls are going to be out. You'll get in trouble. Stay at home with the wife. Order dinner. Take her to dinner and all that stuff. So 104 days. Then you have Christmas and vacation and Easter thing and all that kind of stuff. There's so many days out of the year. Almost half of the working, pardon me, it itches. Almost half the working days of the year. Like over 200 days you're spent doing nothing. The trick is must have nose hairs tickling me the truth is i mean the secret is 
don't spend money on the days that you're free. Don't do what women do. What are you going to do today? I don't know. Let's go shopping. It's like water buffaloes running to the river. It's never one. It's like a herd of them. As soon as one says, let's go shopping, it's like a herd of water buffalo running to the river. When a guy wants to go shopping, I need a pair of socks. So he goes and buys a pair of socks. Then he goes home. What are you shopping for? And the women say, I don't know. Let's just go find stuff. <laughs> you have you have a closet? I know we're in Hollywood. Everybody's got I a closet. I do have a closet. I do. You have a closet? You found me out. Do you have, do you have shoes in the closet? I'm wearing shoes right now. Do you Look have these some shoes? shoes? Do you want to know how much I paid for these shoes? No, They're very I don't cool. Care. Have, do you have I some? Think you should find, I think you should hear. What's that? I think you should hear how much I paid for these I really cool say $150. shoes. I will say $150. $17.98. Very impressive. Thank you very much. So where were we? Okay, your ventures. Okay, let's go to your movie, your production company. So you do want no, people. No, it's a film company. A film company. Yeah. So, Simmons Hamilton. Mm-hmm. So tell me we about that. We have our first one coming out uh, end of the year or beginning of next year. It was supposed to be out by now, but there's a lot of big What's movies. What's the movie? Don't cross the street when there are a lot of cars going back and forth. Don't do that. Wait for the cars to pass and then leisurely still look around. So it is theatrical. It's going to be in over 3,000 theaters just in America. So it's big. Mm. It's called Deepwater. It's got Sir Ben Kingsley, Aaron Eckhart, Rennie Harlan directing, who directed one of the Die Hard movies. It's big, mm. big stuff, big action film. Another one with Bella Thorne, who may have the role of her lifetime. She's done a very good job there. And Mel Gibson's in it as well. That's a lower budget one, but also an action thriller. Wait, can we talk about Mel Gibson a second? Sorry? Can we talk about Mel Gibson a second? Known him for a long time. Yeah. Okay, because there was some stuff years ago. Was he like, did he say some anti-Semitic stuff or am I just sure. remembering that? So you know what, what said, ha- tell you me know what. You know who said more anti-Semitic stuff than uh, Mel? Me. What's 12 inches in Jewish? Nothing. Yeah, but you know that somebody making jokes about themselves is so not what? the same thing as somebody making jokes about other people. So what? When nobody's looking, or and I'm not, never been drunk. When things happen and you're not in your right mind, you have to say almost anything. Was he drunk allegedly when he said these things? I don't even remember what he said, to be honest. Oh, I'm I'm aware only of what I've read. But I've known Mel for a long time, and I know how much he gives literally tens and tens of million and never talks about it. There's an entity called Mending Kids that we're deeply involved with that gives children free operations. And who funded the whole thing? Mel Gibson, by himself. Never did a, an interview with that. Okay, so no issue with Mel Gibson. I got, oh, it. No. got it. Okay. Are, you do know, you have an issue with anyone? You know anyone? I have an, uh, an issue oh, with? Oh, you answered my question before I I beg your pardon. I love the sound I, of my own voice. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. Go ahead. Who? No, go ahead. No, my question I was... I told you, men and women, <laughs> Jewish men and women are exactly the same life form. Go ahead. My question was going yes. to be, is there anybody or who do you have an issue with? Well, Hitler is probably not a good guy. Agree. Who else? You were just about to tell a story. Oh, there are a lot of bad guys in the world. Uh, but people, how about people who you know? No good. Not just bad guys. We all know about Hitler. But who else? Who were you just going to tell a story about? A lot of what you say is like an attempt to turn people against you. An attempt? Yeah, maybe subconscious. Just talking about myself. No, but I mean, you know, you'll say things about derogatory. Maybe you don't see it as derogatory, but what you is, know, what is derogatory? I don't derog- I don't know. Maybe things about women or no, those are true. men or. No, but that's those are true. <laughs> okay. It's like it can't be well, derogatory every- if it's true. We have a tendency. We are meat eaters. I know there. Are, my daughter is vegan. I know, and we talk about this all the time. We have canines. The teeth are designed to rip meat, and then we chew them with the back molars. We're, we're, if it wasn't for meat, it's before farming, we didn't know that, we would be extinct. 
my daughter knows that, but I was like her when I was a lot younger. I couldn't stand the thought of cutting a chicken's head off and you know all that, all the suffering. She's right, morally and ethically, but we eat meat. We're predators. We eat meat. So I forgot where my well, You were talking was. about uh, the, um, how polarizing politics is. So I think you didn't want yeah, to mention who you just, were talking about. When I was growing up, it was the days of, you know, John Kennedy and Abraham Lincoln, because I'm older than you think I am. Mm -hmm. yeah, that was another joke. Well, I thought you were that old. I figured you were being Yeah, we don't, and the best part is we don't give a fuck. You're on social media, right? Barely. Barely. Barely on Twitter. Do you do your own? Uh, no, Sophie... Our daughter uh, takes care of Instagram, which I never go on, and Facebook. I think Nick or Sophie uh, takes care of that, but I, I really don't care. Mm -hmm. But I, I will say I fully admire this new form of money making, the influencers. That's a job that never existed before. So this was invented by young people who have no qualification, no resume, no experience of anything. So that's fascinating mm, to mm -hmm, me. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like the Kardashian fam, especially Kim, who invented that thing. That should be a course that's taught in colleges. Kardashian branding. Branding. Well, that's the whole Branding is the whole thing. Know who and what you are and what you stand for. Um, I mean, you have to consider yeah. in that family, you've got two female, it's worth noting, whose resume was non-existent, no experience, no nothing. But they're both million uh, billionaires. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah, they're they are business people. What other? Uh, that doesn't no question. count Kanye, who used to be a billionaire. Uh huh. Um, yes, a lot of them don't make money though. So the Kardashians, absolutely. But a lot of influencers, there are so many now, and well, a lot of them are not making it's money. Relatively, because mm -hmm. almost the lowest end of the influencer model makes six figures. Somebody who's successful. There are a lot I of influence up I've on seen the, a yeah. And then there's, and you have something you can sell, which is your mm -hmm. bodies and sexuality. Oh, it's called OnlyFans. That's taken off. Because men are interested. Mm -hmm. So in what's the, the next business thing that you're going to jump don't invest, into? I mean, other than. Uh, Stock market. And yeah, but invest your time in because ah. you've gotten into all these things. So well, I'm just signing a deal now for a new island resort area that's hiring me and paying me a decent enough to spread their messaging because whether you're a religion or a political entity or a rock band or a podcast you've got to be able to spread everything's about mm. a story and every religion needs its prophet or its Muhammad or its Jesus to be able to spread the story without that the story doesn't spread and soap suds need commercials and stuff. You've got to be able to spread the message. Like pollinate. Pollinate is a good idea. You need the bees. I want those special bees that come into the flower to get pollen so they can go off and create new flowers without the bees and everything. Doesn't happen. So I'm like a bee that goes to different flowers to collect you know, all the pollinations and stuff. And people pay me. Mm. So there's a a fascinating, amazing business in Alaska that I have a piece of, and the largest entertainment sports complex in all of North America. Which is? Uh, Arizona Mesa. It's got a long name. Okay. That's in Mesa, Arizona. I have sodas. Go to moneybagsoda.com. Okay. Go to moneybagwine.com. Uh -huh. Wines.com. Wines you can go to moneybagvodka.com. 10 times distilled with the most beautiful bottle you ever saw. I mean, there's so much. Okay. So little time. Before I ask you my final question, I did just remember one thing. Tell me about what happened with Terry Gross. Oh, Terry Gross. The NPR. I remember a long time ago, uh, it was in the swirl of Kiss was in a peculiar time. And we still have had the sort of the dark shadow of are you cannibals, are you Nazis, or you know, this kind of thing. Yeah, my, that's what I want to do is join the Nazi party after my mother survived Nazi Germany. So I, I had a, you know, a defense button when I met somebody who was not being respectful 
have to give as good as you get. And I remember Gross, I went to this dusty old place uptown New York, and she, I think the gender is she, I'm being respectful here, I don't know, uh, said, yeah, walk over, and there's lots of books, you know, in that way it's very impressive. So tell me about The Kiss. I'm going, The Kiss? I go, well, tell me about the NPR, which sounds like communicable disease. She goes, well, you can't say that about NPR. Fuck yeah, I can. Who listens to your stuff anyway? I mean, I was, she was uh, not an agreeable person. And I'm, I think you noticed by now, I'm pretty upfront. I didn't like her then, I don't like her now, and why, why pretend? So, when you're, not rage, when your button is pushed, you push back. There is something called holier than thou, and I found her holier than thou. By the way, if you want to quote the existential philosophers, Nietzsche, Kierkegaard, Kant, I'll go toe to toe with you. You want to get religious on me? Psalm and verse, I'll go with you. I'll beat you. Science, anthropology, whatever you want to talk about. But you can't, it's difficult to push back on somebody who just has the feeling that the life form that just walked into their space is lower than them because it's based on nothing. And that, my dear, does not work with me. Okay. In essence, in parentheses, who the fuck do you think you are? All right. Last qu two questions. I never touched her. Who do people think you are? Who do they think Gene Simmons is? I would say there are some, could be a large number, could not, who think I'm an asshole. In fact, I named my second solo album Asshole, which is I, I, I thought was akin to black people taking possession of the n-word and fat people overweight people obese people taking uh, possession of that so that you lessen the impact of that I'm okay with being labeled or thought of as an asshole because I know who I am and there are other people who think you only do this for money and my response is of course why am I not salt of the earth when almost all the jobs on the face of the planet are performed by people who don't like the job they have and the only reason they're doing that is to be able to earn money to feed their families and put a roof over their head. Only for money. Nobody wants to dig ditches on the highway or the building we're in, somebody had to put up. They do that every day. They go to work at the same thing every day, nine to five, five days a week join the union or not and break their break their backs and never get rich just to be able to, well it's the salt of the earth why can't i be salt of the, the fact that i make more money but i also give to philanthropy and by the way it's none of your fucking business who or what or where i'm not trying to impress you or not i know who i am and maybe that's the best thing to do in life is to just be comfortable in your own skin because not everybody likes Jesus either. And who are you, for real? I was born Chaim Witz, a name given to me, but I'm much bigger than that. I'm, I'm uh, really something. And I would recommend everybody to be uh, delusional that way about themselves, because whether you are that or not, your brain helps you get there by being delusional about it. Take Mike Tyson, who I know reasonably well, a fascinating human being. I mean, really exceptional. You have to consider that at some point early on in life, he had a bad childhood, bad family life and all that. If it wasn't for Gus raising him and oh, D'Amato and instilling in him and all that, he was shorter than heavyweights. His arms weren't as long as heavyweights. He, he talks with an interesting voice and has 
some problem pronouncing certain words. So, you know, he's the butt of jokes and everything. Except he decided at some point in his life, early on, before he turned 20, 18, 19, that he was going to be the most dangerous man that ever stepped in the ring. Mindset is the most important thing, regardless. There's no such word as irregardless. Regardless, you're saying there is? No, I'm saying that's a pet peeve of mine, and thank you for it's clearing it up. It's a double negative. Yes. Yeah. It's irrespective and regardless combined by no mistake. Such thing. It's regardless of the fact that there was no logic, almost delusional, in saying, oh, yeah, I'm going to be the most dangerous man. I'm going to knock out people in five seconds. That's exactly what he did. There's such a thing as will to live, will to win. It's the will. Mindset is everything. So I recommend to everybody be more delusional. Every female that ever put on a stiletto heels or anything, be hot. you are hot. You ever wonder how larger black girls have no problem shaking it, showing it off, whereas white girls are concerned if there's five more pounds of stuff. What do black girls have that white girls don't have? strong sense of self that's it's what it's all about and the more they have of that feeling the sexier they are you make it real by your mindset never pick a fight with a short guy who is smaller than you and lighter than you who just has the i'm your ass is mine don't pick a fight with that guy because it doesn't matter if you're going to win you're going to get hurt yeah, so it's the will to win is everything. And that's what I have buckets full of. I know it continues on. I'm more ravenous and hungry to do stuff and achieve more than I've ever been. And I've done pretty well so far. All right, I talk about mindset a lot. You you gave me the perfect example of that. So I thank you. I've never I've never uh you what? I was going to say I've never done the couch thing, but I have a few times. I've never done the the therapist get on the couch. There's so many jokes I could tell. <laughs> Did you ever think about it? N no. Well, I was going to ask you about that, but I knew not to bother because I knew you wouldn't have ever done it. Because so I dropped it. Because you knew what? I knew you wouldn't see a therapist. Knew I wouldn't see it that yeah. way? Yeah. No, no. I knew that the answer would be no, I've never saw a therapist. I was going to ask you that question. I had that in my head of, Who let me ask that. Who do therapists see? What do you mean? Oh, so plenty of therapists see other therapists. So who's right? No, it's not about right or wrong. It gives them a place to talk about Who stuff. shines the light to make you understand? Uh, this therapist who's laying down on the couch or the other therapist? No, well, it really is the... So I'm not... That, now we're getting a little meta with the two therapists, but a Jung, therapist... Jungian or Freudian. Okay. Or a little bit of both or neither, but... It, Semantics, the but I'm not anti-semantic. But the therapist helps can, sees it so as a therapist i connect the dots i get here i listen i watch i connect dots and then i help them see it but mostly you ask questions yeah i mostly ask questions so and then i then i show them what i'm seeing test, so we talk no about ourselves well i mean a little bit but i also get history from people well what happened what was it like what was your childhood like what was your mom like, like said, all that stuff questions. i ask questions and then i get information and then i and start to see patterns two Jews sitting with each other how are you how am i how should i be who are you a lot of questions all right gene thank you so much for this it was a pleasure to talk to me